So I just want to go through the list of nine symptoms that you experience with BPD. I'm not going to go through the details of what each of these mean. Instead, I'm going to do videos based on each individual symptom so that I don't take up too much of your time today. Number one, fear of abandonment. Number two, unstable relationships. Number three, chronic feelings of emptiness. Number four, paranoia and dissociation. Number five, explosive anger. Number six, extreme emotional mood swings. Number seven, self-harm or suicidal behavior or threats. Number eight, unclear, unstable self-image. And number nine, impulsive self-destructive behaviors. So those are the nine symptoms. Now, I just want to give you guys a few tips on how to deal with BPD. Borderline personality disorder is a very big struggle with dealing with interpersonal relationships. Often this is because we've experienced trauma during our childhood and um, which carries on to our early adulthood a lot of the time, which is why some therapists do confuse it a little bit. Not necessarily confuse it, but they struggle to decide whether you have CPTSD or BPD some of them even argue that they're the same exact thing. Now here are some tips for you borderlines to be able to cope with these symptoms a little bit more easily. Number one, if you feel like you're about to split, meditate. When it comes to meditation, you don't have to do it in the stereotypical um situation scenario, okay? Some people may enjoy that. Some people may like to just sit in silence Meditation is really when you're just living in that moment and you're being mindful. So if that means listening to some music to help get you back into a calmer, more cool and collected state of mind, do that. Another way to deal with splitting, which I found very helpful, is completely freeze. This also counts if you're feeling manic or if you're feeling like you're about to self-destruct. So what I mean by that is just completely until you feel better. Just just freeze. Don't say a word. Don't do anything. Don't move from your spot uh, if you can help it. Sometimes you kind of have to get up to go to the toilet or something, but keep yourself safe. That's another one. Keep yourself indoors if you can, because something I've noticed is I'll tend to self-destruct if I go outside. Pay attention to those patterns too. Do you tend to self-destruct more outside or inside? Does it help you to go on walks or do you feel like you're putting yourself in more danger by doing that? Keep an eye on your patterns of behavior. Which leads me on to maybe keep a diary of your emotions throughout the day. I'm not saying you have to do a 10 page essay every day about how your day's gone, but put felt fr like, you know, just a list of things you felt that day. Frustrated, angry, sad, happy, manic, whatever you're feeling. Keep a list of that. That's going to be very useful in the future. It will also be useful for your therapist when they want to decipher a kind of pattern uh, of your personal behaviors in order to help you to find the perfect therapy for you. Another tip that I suggest if you have BPD, if you have access to therapy, please get that therapy. If you don't, which tends to be the case with a lot of people, it's either too expensive, there's not therapy for that in your area, amongst a lot of other issues, you know, if you're disabled, for example, and you just cannot get there, there are people on YouTube who do help with that and they will teach you the skills that they learn in therapy. One of them is actually my friend Catalina who is Spanish and she does dialectical behavioral therapy which is very useful. And so I will link my best friend Catalina's videos in the description because I feel like they're very, very helpful, especially for those of you who are unable to go to therapy, even if it's just because you missed one session and you want to catch up and remember what was said or maybe you even dissociate it throughout these sessions. Whichever situation you're in, it's very useful to look at it. Even if you don't struggle with BPD, I feel like these skills are very valuable for everyone on a daily basis to use. Another tip I find very useful is positive affirmations. A lot of us borderlines end up also being codependent and so using positive affirmations to ourselves every day can help that self-esteem and that develop a sense of self within us. So for example, I am strong, I am a bad bitch, I am powerful, 
I am kind, I am loving, I am loved. Positive affirmations every day can have a huge impact on you. Another one for those of you who are able-bodied and are able to do so is exercising. Now, I don't like to exercise, but what I mean by exercising isn't go to the gym, although that may help some of you. What I mean is walk through your house. A little bit of exercise can boost your serotonin levels up, so although it's not going to cure your BPD, it will help you with the depressive side of BPD. So the depression that comes alongside it, it will be useful in coping with those situations. Another tip I have for you guys is decreasing the amount of time you spend on your phone and social media. This does not count only for borderlines, but it does definitely have an impact on us. If you are on social media due to work and things like that, it can be difficult to do that. However, if you're unable to get rid of social media or you're unable to stay off it for whatever reason, I mean, I'm obsessive by nature, I can't stay off it for very long, what I like to do is I'll follow accounts that speak about my disorder, people who struggle with my disorder and speak about it so I don't feel alone, which is another tip, you know, follow accounts that make you feel less alone, make you feel like you're being listened to, heard and valued as a borderline rather than reading articles that speak so poorly on us because it can really affect our self-esteem and therefore that impacts the way that we treat others and ourselves. Something else that tends to help me is in university I record all my lectures because I dissociate quite severely so I'll record it and then when I'm at home or when I'm in a better mindset I will re-listen to those lectures and kind of help to get that information sunk into my brain and I find that very very useful. Something else as well that is very useful is making sure you're keeping yourself surrounded by people who are positive influences on you. I know it's very difficult with the fear of abandonment to let go of people who might be a little bit toxic for us or just might not be on the same wavelength as us, but the feeling that you get after doing that when you realize your own worth, I can't even put into words how important and how worth it that is. Your BPD symptoms will subside quite substantially once you make sure that you're surrounding yourself with positive influences. It's not gonna kill your BPD, once again, but it will help you a lot. Something else as well is try to keep your space tidy and clean. The way that I make sure that I do that is I will watch YouTube videos of people doing it and because I'm so easily influenced, I've kind of like hacked my BPD a little bit. So because I know I'm easily influenced, I'll watch videos of people doing the thing that I want to do and that will push me into doing it. So if I start listening to someone being like, I'm tidying my room and I'm cleaning this and I'm redoing my entire bedroom, I will want to do that. So if I'm watching videos of people doing things that I know I should be doing, I'm gonna wanna do those things. Those are some of the tips I have. My camera keeps dying, so I'm gonna have to go, unfortunately, but I love you guys so, so much, and I'm so grateful that you exist. Thank you for watching my videos. I will be back very soon with new videos. I promise this time. I know I keep saying it, but I promise, you know? Like, I've got ginger hair now, so that means something, I think. It means I was manic the other day, but I'm just gonna say this ginger hair is gonna keep me on track with YouTube for now. <laughs> I love you. Please stay safe. Comment if you need anything. DM me on Instagram, Jessie's Life Story, on Twitter, Jessica Tully. Just message me, hit me up. Don't you worry, I am here for you. I love you. I'm here to support you. We're in this together. And... Yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye, babies.